happy to have Steve Clark uh, on the Zoom call here to share his uh, career advice uh, and give you some tips on how you can make it pro. Uh, I'll just give you a quick overview. I'm sure most of you, we've got some keepers on here, Steve, as well. I'm sure you'll know who Steve is and you'll know about his career. But um, Steve, you know, he's made over 350 um, career uh, appearances. Um, within them appearances, he's, uh, he's numerous times kind of been awarded player of the season and he's made the team of the season uh, in the league. So he's a really strong figure. Um, just going to quickly go over his career. Um, so he started playing uh, in the NCAA for Oakland uh, University, played there three years. He was playing for Michigan Bucks as well. That's where he met Mark Ellis, uh, which was before the Riesa program. Uh, when he was at the Michigan Bucks, he was named uh, the championship MVP. Um, after that, he came over to England, to Bradford City, had a trial. Um, unfortunately, the trial didn't work out because of visa issues, not because of Steve's potential. Um, and then Steve was uh, really determined, um, and I'm sure he's going to talk about it. But after that, he went on to play in uh, Norway for, you're going to have to, the, my pronunciation, pronunciation is going to be really bad here, but Stabek and Honofoss, is it? Yeah, that's about as good as I can do as well. <laughs> Honofoss, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, and uh, the interesting thing about that is, is actually when uh, Honfoss, Steve actually kind of rang the club up um, and demanded a, a trial, really. So that determination to, to want to play a uh, professional, um, I'm sure he'll share that with us. Uh, again, he had a, an outstanding time there, spent over three years with them, named Player of the Year. Uh, and also named in the, the squad of the season for that league. So, tremendous effort. Uh, went back to America, Columbus crew, over 100 appearances, played every single minute of uh, the, the 2014 season, which were 34 league matches. That's phenomenal. Um, again, he was named Defender of the Year there. Um, and now, well, there's a couple of clubs as well. He played for uh, DC, uh, and now he's playing for Portland Timbers. Um, so an amazing career and, you know, really lucky to have him on here. So I think it'd be great, uh, Steve, if you can just uh, start to talk really about kind of your development from 16 to 20. You said from from 16, about high school on? Yeah. So if you could talk about like the, the, the early development from 16 to 21, kind of. Um, sure, sure. So um, well, it's nice to be here with you all. And most of you, all, you guys are American, is that correct? And playing in the, the University in London or suit Leeds? Yes. Okay, very cool. So it's nice to um, a, somewhat of a similar path, but you guys are taking university abroad, which is really cool. Um, so I, when I was 16 or 17, I got really serious about soccer, but the opportunities weren't um, as, you know, as many as that we have now. So I was a real late bloomer. I, I, I didn't really have many offers to play anywhere in college. I, um, I had a one scholarship from the University of Cincinnati and then Oakland offered me a walk-on spot, like preferred walk-on and, and a chance to compete. Um, and I decided to go there. And, and once I got connected there um, at 18, from 18 to 21, I made a huge, huge jump in my career. Um, and that was a lot because of uh, listening to coaches and good coaching in Eric Pogue at Oakland University, but, but also um, just complete determination. And I was really... Um, I mean, I was obsessed that I was going to be a, you know, that I was going to make it as a, as a top goalkeeper in America. So, um, and that came off in many different ways, but I, I was, you know, as Mark would tell you, like I would, I was just, I was always talking about it. I was always, um, you know, thinking about the game. I was always training. I was doing what, you know, I would wake up most days and be like, all right, what do I have to do? Is it a gym day? Is it, is it a training day? Who can I train with? Um, and there was a lot of sacrifices in that. I didn't see it as a sacrifice at the time because a lot of my friends were going out and, and they were at Michigan State University, the bigger universities partying. And I was, you know, doing a little bit here or there, but I was the majority of the time I was, I was focused on soccer um, and I was focused on getting better. And I think that when, you know, when I, I was going to come on to this call, the main thing I wanted to tell you guys was, you know, I think the starting point for a player no matter where you are in your career is that things are possible. And if we can start there and saying, look, I may be here and I want to be somewhere else in six months, in one year, in three years, that that can happen. And so I've always taken in my career that things are possible. And so that's the starting point that every player I believe should have. Perfect. So when you were playing amateur in, in, in that kind of co college league, did you ever feel like you were going to break? Did you ever feel like you were going to break into professional law? So again, um, 
there, I, I maybe could have left for the pros a little earlier, but that just wasn't the case. You know, Oakland was really committed to having me go for five years with Gary. They weren't going to let me go, but um, I, I, I didn't have the opportunity. You know, there was no, it wasn't the, it wasn't the, you know, cl professional clubs were looking for goalkeepers in college at that time. So um, I wasn't even sure that I could make it. I really believed it. Um, but there was, I always had doubts, you know, like, am I going to make it? Am I not? It wasn't an easy road. Perfect. Um, so the Michigan books, then you, obviously this is where you kind of met Mark Ellis. It'd be great if you could just talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so the, in Oakland University, the Michigan Bucks were like par basically partnered. They trained at our campus and Mark would come over for our camps. And then Mark eventually coached us um, with the Michigan Bucks. We were kind of the top amateur players. And, uh, you know, we, we had a, I really benefited from the English influence on my game. And, and similar to what you guys are going to England, we just had English um, coaches come to Oakland University every summer. So we kind of got that um, international flavor with our soccer at Oakland and Michigan Bucks. Um, and then Mark and I just kept in touch. And then, you know, obviously, as you get older, and became a coach and now a friend. And, and, you know, he was instrumental in me getting to Bradford City. I mean, when you look at my career, you know, that trip abroad really started everything for me. Amazing. Yeah. So how did how did you cope under the pressure of Bradford uh, in a trial situation? How, how did you, how did that make you feel and how did you cope with it? Yeah. Well, I, that was kind of my, you know, there was a big, I've already heard about English, you know, English football and, and um, you know, I, I, I didn't know my level compared to the players, but you know, it was pretty evident from the first rep of a, as a, from a goalkeeping session that, you know, there, I was at the level or above the goalkeepers there, you know, so it wasn't, uh, there was, for me, it was, it wasn't a matter of if I, I really didn't have a sense that like, I, I was going to fail because I, I was already failing. And I, I mean, I wasn't, I had played one year professional and it didn't go that well. So it, me going abroad was kind of, you know, I don't want to call it a Hail Mary pass, but it was, it was, it, there was nothing there was nothing to lose for me at Bradford city. And I knew that I really couldn't play because of work permit issues. So um, it was nice to just get reps with those guys. And I think John McLaughlin is still playing in the championship. He's had quite a good career from Bradford it's city. Sunderland, I think. Yeah. I think so. yeah. He's, he's done really yeah. well. So good for, you know, and there was another guy on loan from Huddersfield town, but it, it was a great experience. I can just say that. Perfect. Yeah. So how did, um, how did Honfoss compare to uh, the football you encountered back at home in the U S yeah. So I'm glad you brought this up. And I, and for the guys listening, you know, if you guys want to have a career, which it's pretty evident that you do, you're jumping on a Zoom call on a Sunday. But, you know, it's important as a young player, not only to have the the commitment and, and the belief, but you have to have a vision on how to be become a pro. And things just don't get handed to you. And I think in our culture, we 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 think that, you know, players just get contracts set in the mail, even even at my age and 350 pro games. Things just don't things just don't come on your plate. You have to go have vision and, and kind of cultivate your career, if that makes sense. So when I went to Bradford City, I knew Bradford probably wasn't a place I was going to sign unless like a, a miracle happened with a work permit, which was close to 0% chance. I had done my research, but my vision was I would go to Bradford City. Then when I was going to Norway, I could call the clubs in Norway and say, hey, I was going, I was just training with Bradford City in England, give me a trial. And that would kind of give me that stamp of approval from a smaller country saying, oh, England, Bradford City. Wow, maybe he's, you know, because if I knew if I said, I'm coming from America, give me a trial, they probably wouldn't have picked up the phone. They would have hung up the phone. But Bradford City was kind of my in saying, I was just at Bradford City. Maybe I'm worth a look. And it, and it, and it ended up working. So um, have a vision for how you can make it, you know, cultivate that vision. If you don't know, start calling people, start journaling about it. Amazing. Yeah. So that kind of leads on to my next question about, Kind of, can you just share any tips on how you can succeed from youth player to, to trying to gain a, a, you know, a trial or a, a contract? Any tips that you kind of live by? So I think the first thing to do is, as you guys are in quarantine, and, and a lot of you are not in the UK, correct? Yeah, most of them are in, uh, in America, coming, coming soon, a couple of weeks. Right, so it's, it's, a, it's a difficult time, and this has been shitty, excuse my language, for everyone, right? So... Um, I, what I would say is the number one thing to do is stay in the present moment today. What can I do to get better? And a lot of these things, um, they'll take care of themselves. So, uh, you know, if you're saying, if I was in your shoes, in my mind, my thinking would have been, I'm coming out of this quarantine period before I get back to university in Leeds. 
I'm going to be more fit and I'm going to be in a better player than I was before. And, and I'm going to work to do that. So that's just how I would keep it in the present moment saying, okay, this is a bad situation, but it's bad for everyone. How can I make my make, how can I come out of this a better player? Amazing. Yeah. So just going back to um, Columbus crew, when you made, when you played every single minute of that season and 34 games, it's a long, it's a long time that, and a lot of minutes, how did you, how can you consistently keep yourself at your best? What, what can you do to kind of keep yourself at that top level? Um, well, I, to be honest, it was, I played, it wasn't just that season. There were six seasons where I played every minute for six years straight. So it was a little bit longer than one, but um, um you know, there's, there's a lot of work that goes in that as a younger player, I, I don't think a lot of, a lot of the, when I was younger, I realized how much sacrifice it takes to keep your body in it and your mind in it. It's not just the two hours you're on the pitch. It's the recovery. It's, you know, you guys have heard this stuff before, but I'm just going to say it again. It's the recovery. It's thinking about the game. It's, you know, it, how's my mentality? You know, do I need to, you know, am I tired? Am I sick of um, my routine? Do I need to go out and have a night out with the boys? Like where, what, you know, kind of a real approach to saying, you know, Mark played for how many years at Brever? I mean, Mark was, you know, you played for years, man. So it's, yeah. it's about knowing yourself and like, what do you need? You know, and, and sometimes you can say, I've heard it said, like, be your own coach. Like if you're a player, you know, Callum or Ethan or Logan or, or, or Christian or Brendan, you know, it's like, what do I need today? Okay, I, I, I didn't train yesterday. Today's a work day. Now, okay, maybe I've trained for three days. Today's a day off. So it's it's about taking a mindful pr approach and kind of a professional approach to yourself. Thanks, Steve. Um, it'd be great if you could just share um, a career, uh, standout moments in your career and how, how they made you feel. And yeah, great, great question. Well, there's always those moments where like they get you know, there's a couple saves that went viral on Instagram and blah, blah, blah. But I, I, I can tell you this much, you know, if you guys are the one save I'll talk about is, you know, there's moments in your career when you're trying to make a professional that no one really knows. And but they're, they're, they're kind of important to yourself. And when I went to Bradford and then I went to Norway, I had a trial game and I had done well in training. And I could feel that if I, this trial game went well, I was going to get my first professional contract. And I, they only gave me 45 minutes to play. I played, I played a solid half and then I got offered the contract after that game. And, you know, that may not be something that many people know about, maybe it's just for me, but all that work I went into, that was, a, that was a really special moment. You know, your first professional contract with making money that, you know, you can put some in the bank. It, it was, was important. Amazing. Yeah. And on the flip side of that, uh, career lows, can you, can you share one with us and how, how did that, how did you get, how did you guide yourself through that, that time really? Um, man, well, I've got a long career. There's been a lot of lows, There's been a lot of lows and a lot of ups, man. Um, it's life for the goalkeeper. Um, so, uh, career low, you know, I, what I would say is, um, I left Columbus in 2016 and then I was leaving. I was, I, as a goalkeeper, it's really important to be stable. And I couldn't, I went to Denmark for six months. I went back to DC and I was in and out of the lineup. I, I played in Denmark, but in DC, I wasn't starting regularly. And so that year was, was a, another, another challenge because I had been a, a number one my whole career. So that was another time where it was like, okay, am I just going to retire? I was 30, 31. I had done some, done what I wanted in the game. I hadn't done everything. Um, but it was kind of a recommitment time of, okay, I'm not playing. And you know, when you're not playing, all you guys know, when you don't get chosen, it's, it's kind of a psychological blow, you know, it's not it doesn't feel good. You're not happy about it. And, and certainly confronting that for the first time in 10 years was difficult. Um, but, it, but again, starting with a mindset of, I just said, look like, okay, how can I take this, this instance where I don't get on with the coach? I don't, I, for lack of, I don't really respect the coach. Um, but how can I get better in this moment? And then I'll be ready to play when I'm called upon. And I eventually did that. It wasn't always a smooth path, but I was able to find my way. Amazing. Yeah. I'm just going to share my screen and I'm going to uh, put a save up that you've do, done. And I just, it'd be great if you could just talk us through that save. Um, you probably know which one it is. It's the MLS is back, saving the tournament. Sure. So I'll just get it up so everyone can see it. Two seconds. Yeah, get this up. Hopefully everyone can see that. Hopefully you closed out your browsers before.
played last year. Could this be Chicharito's moment to get his first down the galaxy goal? No, it's Unbelievable save. <laughs> we'll just watch that again. Well, Steve Clark sees this one all the way. And then look at him get up. The rebound from question just about. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'll just uh, go back on here and stop sharing. One sec. Yeah, so it'd be great. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable save. Uh, it'd be great if you could talk us through that. Um, how, how did you do that? <laughs> well, um, so that was at the MLS's back, and we were kind of one of the first teams. You know, we went to the bubble. I don't know if you guys followed any of this. We went to, to a hotel, and it was super quarantined. That was our first match. Um, and uh, Ch Chicharito, you know, was the Mexican star, and um, – you know, I did my research and knowing he would probably go to my left and, and I went a little early. And then the second save, which is probably the better save, is just a moment where, you know, we all work towards as players where, you you know, you're able to come up with that, you know, kind of highlight moment and make the save. It was really fun because it was the only game going at the time. And so, you know, there's some games you play as a professional where there's 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 so many more eyes on the game. You know, there's so much more attention. You know, it was it was on, you know, we were live on ESPN at the time and and then after the fact on Sports Center as American, that's pretty fun, you know. So, um, yeah, and it was early in the game too. It was the first 15 minutes. Important save for our team. Yeah, unbelievable save. Thanks. Um, so it'd be great if you could just share a bit of guidance now, and then we'll go into the question and answer. Um, so, what's three things that players need to be able to do to play as high as they can? Yeah, three things. Um, or anything really, anything that you can. Yeah, uh, yeah, we touched on some today as well, but, you know, there's, number one, things are possible. Start start there with yourself. You know, you can't, look, if you're saying this is my goal, but deep down you don't believe that, that it's possible, then why are you doing it? You know, you can play in college and have fun. I, that's fine, you know, but if you want to be a professional, like, let's start with the deep belief that you can do this somehow, some way, you know, and, and that's not, that's, maybe it's a long shot. I know that for me, it was a long shot, but it happened. Um, and then two, you know, the daily, the daily, literally the daily work to get better as you know, and, and sometimes it, again, it doesn't come easy. You're in quarantine. You don't have a team to train with, you know, the gym's closed because of COVID. Like there's all these challenges get better. Um, and number three, that's a great question. Um, yeah. I mean, look, some things are out of your control and, and you hope to get a break. So, I mean, that's just the reality. You have to get breaks as a, as a player um, and hope that, but I can tell you this much when I'm doing my job and I'm, and I'm doing the work breaks come, you know, it's just the re it's kind of the law of life. Like, you, you know, you're working hard every day. All of a sudden you meet a contact, something happens, you get a trial. You know, if you're, if you're hoping things just fall in your lap, it's never going to, it never works. Amazing. And the last question for me is um, you kind of touched on it before. Um, well, I did about how the fact that you kind of rang up the club, but is a, uh, what what can our students do um, in terms of kind of creating opportunities for themselves? What you know, if what can they do really to to get to get chances? Well, I mean, to be in England is 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 such a great you know what a great program you guys got going here. Um, you know, and and I know for me, I'm, one of my point guys was Mark um, and, and him opening those doors. But being in England, there's in, in already in Europe, you know, you have Scandinavia at, available, there's connections with Finland, you know, okay, are you guys going to go from this university right to Manchester United or Leeds? Probably, you know, probably not there. Hopefully there's some steps in between and, you know, looking forward to those steps um, and saying, okay, like, do I want to try to play a year in Finland? Do I want to try to play a year in Norway and Sweden? And like, okay, let's start with that goal. Yes. I want to play in Scandinavia. That's my start. And then you start working backwards. So whenever you, you know, so, okay. So in, when I graduate in two years, I want to tr have a trial in Finland. Okay. So what are the steps to get there? Okay. Tell Mark that. Okay. Number two, try to go there on a summer vacation and, and train. Can I get a training period? You know, I was always a big fan of saying, Okay, I don't, you know, I was always trying to put myself in front of teams constantly. So I knew that Bradford City couldn't sign me, but it could only benefit me from going to Bradford City. It just, it, you know, going there and training, maybe somebody sees you, you know, you never know who's watching, you know, so maybe you have an opportunity to go to Slovenia to, to train with a team, you know, somebody maybe, you know, 
you go there, you never know what happens. And, and the other thing that I would say, and this is the law of life and people that are success, successful will tell you this. When in doubt, go in person. Like, even if, you know, even if I didn't know if Bradford city, Bradford city could have been like, sorry, like our schedule changed. We're not going to allow you to train, but I was still going to take that, take that chance, you know, go in person places and you'll never know what happens, you know, and, and see if you can get in places. And I don't mean just show up at a door and start knocking on IX's door in Netherlands or something. But what I'm saying is go places, go in person and, and just it, there, that, oh, that is a huge benefit to yourself. Awesome, Steve. Thanks. So, yeah, that's it for me in questions. What we'll do now is we'll open it up and I'll 15, 20 minutes uh, and that'll be quarter to when you need to go. Um, question and answer. So, yeah, I know we've got some keepers on here. So I think it'd be great if some of the keepers maybe ask some questions. But, yeah, anyone for a question for Steve? Now's your chance. Yeah, I'll start one. Um, yeah, so I'm a goalkeeper as well. Um, so you said you've played in a bunch of different countries. I was wondering if you could kind of talk about how the, um, the style of play, the level of play compared between some of those different countries and then how you as a keeper over the last, you know, 10, 12 years has been able to sort of adapt to those different styles and kind of, you know, change your game to, um, to be effective in those different, um, those different areas. Yeah. Good question. So first of all, I kind of answer it in reverse order. Like the MLS is the, the amount of money that's coming into the league, the, the level's growing a lot. Um, and you've kind of seen old, you know, some older English players. I got to play with Wayne Rooney, which is pretty cool um, in DC, but, um, now I'm playing at a higher level now than I've ever played in my career. The MLS is just growing and, and tactically it's, it's pretty far behind, but the individual player is quite good here. Um, and there's all, these guys are getting paid a lot of money, more money, more money than I'm making. Um, so, uh, I've had to grow a lot and I still, I mean, even this, you know, now I'm, I'm still growing, you know, so I'm, I'm turning 35 in two months and I'm still working on parts of my game because the level's just getting higher, you know, positioning has to be better. You know, and the MLS is not even the Premier League. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not playing at a top level in the world, but this is still a good level and I have to grow in my game. The other thing that was I was really blessed to have is that when I started in Norway, it fit. I was at the I was at a good spot in my game and I fit the level of play that I was trying to play at. Um, so when I was playing in the second division in Norway at 24, I was good enough. And I, in fact, I was probably one of the best goalkeepers in that league. And then I went to the top league in Norway and I was one of the best goalkeepers in that league. Um, so um in the differences in um in the in the game between countries um yeah wow that's a good question um the norwegians were you know super industrial and they they listened to their coaches like they were they were fanatical about you know that you couldn't there was no descent or you know people you know ran for 90 minutes there wasn't a lot of technique or athleticism in that league they're not athletic people but they were super organized and very, and, you know, they pressed very hard. Um, and in America, it's kind of the opposite. You know, we have a lot of Latins who um, are very talented on the ball, Argentinian players, but they don't really, we don't, sometimes there's a lack of defending and a lot of lack of team tactics here. So you get a different style in them. It's a little more wide open game, you know, that looks maybe funny when you're watching on TV from afar. Awesome. <laughs> got a question. Anyone else for a question? Uh, yeah, just got a couple here for you, Steve. Um, just the first one, like, um, how did you set your goals for, you know, wanting to get out of college and be a professional? And um, what would you say is the difference between being a college player and being a professional player? Yeah, good question. You know, I'm going to take that a little different way, but it's an important question. And, and, and when you were talking about goal setting, like, for you guys, it's, you know, and I think with our culture and in you guys are raised in a different generation than I was, but it's becoming more with Instagram and, and social media. And, and my advice is, is to be okay with setting a goal and not making it, you know, it's okay to fail. And I think the reason I bring up your generation and social media is because everyone's getting a camera on them and getting like shame for doing something stupid or a mistake that gets made, you know, and it's becoming, I, I personally feel people are less inclined to put themselves out there and go reach for the stars you know so what i'm well, the reason i say that is look let's be people who say i want to do something and if i fail you know what no problem like you know people can you know take a hike i don't care what people think i'm going to try my best and i and i and i hope that you guys say when you're setting a goal whether whatever it is i'm okay if i fail at this goal like i still want to get to our national team if people think i'm crazy for saying that that's fine is it is it possible yes is it probable no but i don't care I, it's my goal and i'm, I'm not going to give that goal up just because it's 
it's I'm getting older and it's getting less pro, uh, probable. Um, and the difference between college and, and professional is, you know, every pro game, the, the main difference is every pro game is, is every week is probably the biggest amateur game you've ever played in. And it just becomes every week, you know? So when you guys are playing in your college games, there's probably a few games a year that are huge games, playoff games. Well, the professional game is every weekend. It's just a massive, massive game. And that changes a little, changes your mentality because you, you start to deal with pressure and that becomes, you know, your life changes a little bit when you're dealing with pressure. Guys deal with it different ways. But in, in college, I wasn't concerned about the pressure of performing as much as you are in the pros. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Callum. Uh, Steve, anyone have a question? Martin. Steve, at my ripe old age now, um, <clears throat> we speak to the keepers, uh, and to use uh, an American term, they're more like the quarterbacks in a, in a team. So the sure. question is this. When, when you were younger, in terms of game management, and you probably got better as you've got 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 older, how difficult was it for you as a young keeper to take the sting out of a game and actually calm people down sometimes? And how did you learn that? You know, it's a great... It's a great question, Martin, and, it, and it's really a um, – it's such an important part of the game, and, and that's why you have coaches talking about it a lot, right? And it's as a goalkeeper, you're, you're, you're training, and you're not really worried about, hey, I'm going to take my time on this goal kick, or I'm going to kick this ball long. or um, So learning about it, I think, probably is not the best answer, but it's experience. But the other way to do it, I think, is as a goalkeeper is – you know, as if I'm a goalkeeper and I'm younger, I'm going to watch film and I'm going to go to my coach and say, hey, you, you're talking to me about taking the stinger out of the game. Or take the stinger out of the game. When was the moment you thought about that? Oh, it was this moment. OK, so I'm watching the film. OK. And then in my head, I'm thinking, all right, well, what, what am I not seeing that my coach is seeing? Oh, yeah, we just gave up a big chance. OK, boom. So I'm learning. So after a big chance, we're up one zero. Now I know, OK, maybe it's the time to feel the feel the um, the pressure out of the game. The other thing that I think is really important as a young player is to understand yourself. And as a goalkeeper, sometimes, you know, you get lost in the game, but it's important to understand yourself. When I know, you know, I'll take it a step further, Martin. When I know that my emotions are running high and I feel like I'm trying to force a pass or I, I feel like I want the game too much at a goal kick or a stop in the game, that's when I say myself, okay, the team may not need this, but I myself, I'm not going to make a mistake in this moment. I'm going to take the pressure off myself and I'm going to tell everyone to push up. We're going to kick this ball long or punt the ball, or maybe at worst case scenario, you go down because you, you know, you, you have an injury that you haven't attended to or something like that. Like there's ways to, you know, to really be mindful and be open to the, what's going on in the game. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Mike. you very much. Anyone else for a question for Steve? Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Um, so like you were saying, basically for like playing at the pro level every, every week is, your big match. So like, what's your preparation throughout the week for that match on and off the field? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it's changed since I've gotten a, um, I've gotten, I've gotten older, but um, I think that the most, you know, as we say, you know, you learn in the pros, the most important time is, is, is the, the match, the 90 minutes in the match, you know, and that's not the same in college, like college, you're working on your game and training's training's more important at times or, or as important, you know, you guys want to win games, but you're trying to develop. Um, so for me as a pro now, the, the matches are just so important that 90 minutes is, is what I'm, what I'm judged on. So, so I have a lot of focus on the game day. Um, but again, it changes week to week. I have a primary schedule that I stay with where we have one hard day of training a week and I'm, and I'm focused on that, but I'm also really mindful me as a player. It's like, look, I'm training hard every day and I'm in a different experience than you guys are. You know, your college, you're going to school, you have matches. All I do is play soccer. So some of this for me is different because I need to take moments where I step away and we, you know, my wife and I go on a hike. We have beautiful mountains here in Portland, or maybe, you know, Krell and I are going to go get a hotel somewhere just to take the night away. So it's really, it's really getting to know yourself, um, Cedric, and saying, what do I need in this game? You know, and what do I need to perform at my best? And, you know, you start to, I've heard it called unpeel the layers of the onion. You know, you start peeling back things like, what am I going to do? How do I be my best? And that's, 
you know, you're, I'm already taking care of myself on the field. That's a given. I'm training my hardest. I'm prepared for training. I'm up early. I have ate breakfast. That's, that's not even a question. And I know as the college level, some of you guys aren't even doing that, you know? So I'm saying that's already not even a question. Now I'm going deeper and I'm saying, what's, what's my psychology like today? How am I feeling? Okay. I need to push today. I need to work on this in my game. And it changes it from time to time. Thank you. Probably got time for a couple more questions. So if there's anyone else that wants to ask Steve a question. Can I ask one, Steve? Obviously, with your career and everything you've done, it'd be a crime if you didn't, but you're going to stay in the game, aren't you, in coach, I would have thought, when you finish. Yeah, you know it, man. You know it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, are you going to stay in the pro game or? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I get you, Chris. Yeah. Okay. Great question. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I definitely want to coach. I want to try to coach in the pros. Um. You know, it's a bit of a. I don't know how long I'll last because the lifestyle in the pros, you're changing clubs. It's hard on the family, yeah. and it's it's a difficult profession. And and certainly as American, it's if you want to go coach in England or something like that you you have a lot of challenges with that. And um, but it's it's gonna be a you know the next mountain I climb after playing. Um, and I'm already preparing for it. And and um. But I, I would like to I would like to start in the pros. And then, you know, if, if I've done my time and I, I go back to Oakland University and, you know, coach college and kind of yeah. have a quieter life, maybe I'll try that, too. But I think it's a, a worthwhile game to spend your life, you know, in. And Mark, I know you've done the same. So um, I hope to be in the pros at some point. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? A question? Yeah, I got one. Um, so kind of similar to Ethan's about the different like differences in some of the clubs and countries that you've you've played in um, culturally or kind of like club atmosphere or experience. How did that differ? And kind of like what was your favorite atmosphere or kind of experience you had in the different places you've been? Yeah, um, well, probably the, the the best place that I played, you know, kind of um, in in Europe was was at Copenhagen, and that's a club that you know makes its way into European competitions. FC Copenhagen, um, and we played we <laughs> we lost five. I think it was five one, and I had a terrible game. <laughs> uh, but that's the life of a goalkeeper. Sometimes that happens. But that was a great um, that was a great stadium, and and that's where their national team plays in Denmark. Um, so that was um, that was that was a, a good experience. Um, and then, you know, Major League Soccer has grown to the point where, um, you know, this is a, we have great atmosphere here now, you know, playing in front of 40, 50,000 people and Portland Timbers is, is, you know, Mark, hopefully you get a chance to come. It's incredible atmosphere, 25,000 and great, yeah. great supporters. And, you know, it's a big football or soccer town here. So to be playing in that every week, obviously COVID's kind of been a real bummer, but playing in that is pretty special. You know, it's, it's, it's a, the Portland Timbers are a big team. Yeah. Epic. Um, yeah, I think I think we'll stop there, Steve. I know you you've got a time limit. So I just want to say thanks. Thanks for coming on and sharing, sharing all that with us. It's been really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Matt, you did a great job uh hosting. It's one of the better ones I've had. So congrats to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Steve. It's great seeing you again. Yeah, good yeah, luck, good luck with everything. Guys. Best of luck to y'all. Nice to meet you, Martin. Take care, guys. Yeah, yeah you too, Steve. Thank you. Thank you.